Hello, Amazon sellers. Jordan Malik, Ask Jordan Podcast, episode 111, 111. Thanks so much for dropping by. It's a little different from what you're probably used to. Episodes number 109, 110, 111, and future Ask Jordan episodes are going to be shorter. No fancy jingles before and after, no fancy music, just me talking to you, Amazon seller. This is much less tactical. The episodes from 109 on are much less tactical, meaning, you know, there's much less how to source or how to fix a listing or whatever. This is more like mindset for you if you're an Amazon seller and you're stuck. I hope you're going to, I think you're going to find these helpful. Thank you so much for everybody who wrote in to say that you're happy I restarted the podcast and doing this for you. This episode, I want to talk a little bit about comparing yourself to other sellers. This is a trap that I fall into, not only for my Amazon sales, but my other lines of business that I have, particularly in the information space. I sell a lot of digital information, electronic information that helps Amazon and eBay sellers. It's a huge problem. The kind of emotional grappling you have when you start comparing yourself to other sellers. The, the main culprit of this, I think, is the Facebook factor. Facebook has made it very easy. Many of you who are listening belong to one or more seller help groups, Amazon seller forums on Facebook or seller help groups where people kind of chime in and talk about the sales they're having on Amazon, their problems. And if you're like me, you see snapshots of other sellers' sales. You see somebody post their Amazon screenshot showing their $100,000 a month on Amazon or somebody show, I just saw one today of somebody showing their big shipment of goods from China that came in the container. And there's a little bit of bragging that it, it kind of smacks of a little bit of bragging. You know, I don't think anybody's truly being evil or mean. I think the sellers that are showing their wares or showing their numbers or showing their inventory are probably proud of themselves. And they know that Facebook has an eager and willing audience to praise them. Facebook can be a very dangerous place. Now, of course, overall, is, are those pictures of people's sales and inventory and their their stories of success? Are they inspirational? Sure. But there's a fraction of us, myself included, and maybe you that see that and they find it discouraging. Oh, I can't do that. I'm not doing that. I must be doing something wrong. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Remember, Facebook in any aspect of your life is a white picket fence in many ways. You're seeing one side of the fence. You don't see all the warts and everything that goes on the other side, from the inside. And the same thing from maybe your peers, uh, your, your uh, friends who have the family and the smiling wife and the dog and how everything looks so dandy on Facebook. Well, they're cherry picking what they want to show there. Nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying, again, that people are evil, but nobody wants to put on Facebook the argument they just had <laughs> with their wife or the teenager that just stormed out and was doing drugs. Nobody's going to put that on Facebook for the most part. Some people do. And the same thing goes for sellers. Nobody's going to say, well, I did a million dollars in 2015, but my profit margin was 7%. You know, not that that's even, a, I don't know, maybe that's not even a bad thing. If you do a million dollars and your profit margin is 7%, maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. Or nobody's going to say, yeah, this is my low container full of inventory from China, but I got burned three times to get this and two suppliers ran off with my money. And the same person who posts that picture of the million dollar sales of the big container from China, you'll probably won't hear from them if, and I hope this doesn't happen to them, but that's just an example. If three months from now, their product doesn't sell or they're shut off from Amazon or whatever. So you have to remember instead of doing the same kind of trap that I sometimes fall in and say, oh, I got to do that too right away. I have to do that. I have to find out what they did and I have to do that too right away and figure that out. Um, instead of falling into that trap, kind of ask yourself, what did they do to get there? If, if what they did was quote unquote right. Then the cool thing is that today there's so much free material out there or very inexpensive material on courses or instructions or web pages that, that show you how to do things step by step. A lot of that, by the way, is free on my blog at jordanmalik.com slash resources. I'll leave the link in the show notes for that. So you remember that, that A, it's, you know, they probably followed steps one, two, three to get there. And that's very possible for you to do. So that's the first thing to remember. And the second thing to remember 
is that these uh, people that are doing this, they're no smarter than you. For the most part, I'm sure everybody who's listening to this podcast, you're smart enough because you picked a great podcast to listen to. But there's really no, you know, 99% of the sellers that are out there crushing and probably just have an average education. I'm sure many sellers that are out there crushing and have no college education. Many of them are probably high school dropouts. So don't forget that, you know, just because you see something that looks lofty don't mean, doesn't mean, A, that it's absolutely the whole picture. You're getting the full story of what happened there. Probably not. You're probably not getting the full story. And B, don't think that it's impossible for you. Look, I've maintained this ever since I started. My highest year of Amazon sales was maybe $160,000 in sales. It roughly half. 55% maybe of that was profit. That's because I do it at a very part-time basis. I don't have any employees for that, for my Amazon seller business. And it's really just me and my wife. And we kind of do it on, on the side on a very part-time basis. And we're lucky to have other lines of business, other revenue streams where we don't have to rely just on Amazon. So there are people that started selling on Amazon before I did and several years after I did, 2013, 2014, and that are making one mil, two mil, three mil, not necessarily profit. I don't know what their exact numbers are, but there's plenty of people that have multi hundred thousand dollars in annual businesses. Some people that just work by themselves, don't have any employees, still do quarter mil to half a mil with a healthy profit margin. And there's some people that have hired full teams of people that are doing several million dollars in sales. So don't compare to other, yourself to other sellers. If you're gonna look at them and look at their information, you know, no, no seller is going to lose because they're not on Facebook. If you just shut Facebook off completely, what did people do before Facebook and e-commerce, right? So it doesn't mean that you have to be on Facebook, this whole fear of missing out. And I fall into that trap as well. If I don't see exactly what's going on, who's got what, who's selling what, is all it does is just give me information overload and I really don't know where to turn or where to begin. So start with the basics. If you're going to follow other sellers, keep that in mind. Don't let that distract you. If they start bragging about their showing off their numbers, et cetera, stick to what you know. And then if you want to expand beyond what you know, make sure you're taking a you know, you're taking a course or you're asking somebody for help or somebody who's already done it and willing to share the information, you know, open up a dialogue with somebody on Facebook who's already done great and say, hey, can you just point me in the right direction? I'd like to kind of emulate what you did. And somebody might be surprised. Some of them might say, hey, let's you know, hop on Skype and do a phone call together. I'll tell you exactly what I did. You never know. So keep that in mind and don't get carried away with the visuals and the Facebook part and saying, oh, I can't do that because it's very possible for you you to do it too. One free tool I use is the Chrome internet browser. When I'm on Facebook, I use a Chrome plugin. It's called Newsfeed Eradicator. It's free. Basically, you know, when you log into Facebook and you're looking, it's, it's automatically showing you all the updates from all the your contacts and all that. This Newsfeed Eradicator removes that. So you're not put face front with all these updates. You can actually uh, I don't think this will work on a mobile phone, but it works when you're on Facebook on the computer using a you know, Mac or PC or laptop. It'll take away all the extraneous stuff that's distracting to you. And if you want to go click on one of the groups that you belong to or see an update from a friend or whatever, you actually have to go and you know go find it on your own as opposed to it you know being this constant stream of information flying at you on Facebook. So try you know turning Facebook off for a few days. And stop listening to all these success stories and, and figure out what works for you. I promised you in the past that I don't like these podcast episodes that try to be very nebulous and mamby pamby and the five ways to be more productive, et cetera. The stuff that's kind of, you know, just all hot air. I, I really want you to focus on what I'm telling you here. This is kind of like that, but you know, if you just get into the right mindset, you're gonna be good. You're gonna be great. Okay, that's it for now. We will see you again in episode 112, 112, coming up any day now. And if you want to reach me, just go head over to askjordan.net, click on the envelope icon on the right-hand side. You can shoot me an email. Thanks for listening. Talk to you soon.